folks, welcome to Antique Quest. Today we're going to be working on the Airstream's air conditioner. Now, any anybody that's got an old air conditioner, when you plug it in and you hear it go, mmm, and then it just trips a breaker or shuts itself down, that sort of thing. The first thing you want to do is take the cover off your air conditioner and just grab the bar of the fan. I'm going to show you that when we get up there and just give it a turn. See if your fan is seized. Uh, a lot of time you get just a little bit of rust. You know, they've been sitting for a long time. A lot of these I've found in fields and whatnot. And out of the four Airstreams I've had, three of them, the air conditioners worked as soon as I did that. Um, one never did work, um, but three of them did, and they work great. These, the, they're hard to kill, these old air conditioners. It's usually just a small issue that you have with it. So instead of replacing the whole thing and getting yourself into a big job and, you know, 1000 to $1,500, just go up. I turned this one with my hand, and then it kicked right on. The other thing is you want to make sure your power cord is for 30 amps because you're drawing a, quite a bit of amps to start an air conditioner. Once it's going, it's not so bad. It's probably around 11 amps draw or something like that. But it needs a big boost right at the beginning. So if you're plugged in and you got a 15 amp cord, it's probably going to get hot. So if you go outside and you feel that cord after you've been running your air conditioner for a while, like an extension cord, it's going to be warm to the touch because it's just a lot of power going through there. So if you can get yourself a 30 amp or plug directly from the trailer straight into um, you know an outlet at a campground something like that a 30 amp outlet that's fine but a lot of us end up going for an extension cord into a house outlet so just be in mind that that's going to get warm and that's why um, so we're going to go up on the roof and have a look my shroud blew right off so uh, it was old, brittle, cracked, so before you do this job, be in mind that you may be replacing your shroud because they do, they get very brittle under the sun after all those years. The plastic just crumbles and it's only being held on by four bolts. Um, so it's easy to break and once the front ones go, then the wind's just going to rip it right off, which is basically what happened to us. So my two front bolts are lousy. so. I'm going to try and take the air conditioner apart so I can put two new bolts in the front because I really need those front ones. So let's go up and have a look. The other thing I'll show you is if you're putting a ladder on, roll up a whole bunch of blankets up here to put your ladder against so it's actually leaning on the roof, not on your awning rail because that's going to damage it. And when you do get up there, you want to always stand where the rivets are because that's where your members are that are holding it together. Don't stand in between your rivets, you're gonna make a dent most likely. So always try and keep most of your weight on where the rivets are, which can be a little tricky too. Okay, so here's the fan right here. And that's where you wanna make sure. Now mine was sea solid, you can see the rust on here. And you just want to touch it with a little spot of oil here so it will draw it in and keep it moving freely. And that's probably going to be 60% of the problems with these old air conditioners, especially ones that have been sitting for a while. So, but you can see here, my bolt is basically gone. And over there, actually done a big rivet instead so they had that problem quite a while ago but back here is what's left of my air conditioner shroud just a couple little pieces of plastic so but we got a new shroud and I'll post a link to that in the description below because um, I think it handles most of these old Mach 1 to Mach 3 air conditioners so we got to take all this off so I can get underneath to these bolts.
that's usually where the bees get you. Oh, and would you look at that? There's one right there walking around. Yeah. So, um, but that's the piece we need to put the new bolts on. He's probably on the other side of that bolt. So we're just going to throw him down and deal with him in a minute. He's building away. Yeah, we'll get him down there. Pretty attentive little wasp. And there is my trailer, right inside. Hmm. Not a whole lot of, uh, oh, look at the mud dauber nest. Oh, some serious nesting in here. And I'm gonna be taking that apart now. Might as well, while I'm here, these guys out. Holy jumping. Mud dubbers, wasps, you name it. They love air conditioners. Look at that. Yeah, okay, mud dauber nest. Two wasp nests hanging there. A huge mud dauber nest. And a bunch of various bits down there. Everything else doesn't look too bad. Oh, there's another mud dauber nest way over there too. They're pretty cool, they eat all the spiders. Okay, well, we're going to go down to Vic, that guy, and see if we can't put some bolts on. And I'll just get some spatulas and see if we can't uh, scrape all these guys off, too. Alright. Okay, vintage camper's best friend, one-shot wasp killer. Make sure you get this before you buy anything else. Alright. Okay, I just managed to get a grip on it and wiggle it back and forth and a uh, little spot well broke free because it's so rusty. So now we got two holes in this one, three holes. I just have to remember which hole is the one I want to go in, which will be that one. So those are, there's our new shroud. Beautiful and white and clean. And we've got some stuff in here. Most importantly, some new foam, but most importantly, we got these nuts. So, I'm going to try and uh, match a bolt to these nuts. Okay, so what I did was I put the bolt through, put some washers on it so it just had more surface area to go against. I'm not worried about how far it sticks up here because of all this insulation. That's the only thing I'm worried about is that nut sticking out a bit. So... Uh, that's going to be a hard piece for the plastic to screw down onto. But I think for the most part that can sink in a bit. And that should, should work. I don't have to torque it right down. It's only a plastic shield. So I just have to keep these from turning while I'm putting on these nuts. We'll maybe spin one down see how it works. Okay, so we spun both the nuts all the way down, so we'll just tighten these up again. I think that's going to work. So, we just uh, put some Loctite on there. Because I did spin the nuts all the way, and those didn't move because I got them cranked down pretty good. Same over here. And I've just got some of this old Feather Spray 470 spray adhesive. I uh, used that when I was doing the interior of the 66, because I'm not great at sewing. 
and that stuff held like a rock you just spray it fold it over and there you go it's as good as uh, it's as good as sewing so I'm just going to spray a little bit on here so that isn't falling down into my fan or anything <laughs> 